So can you tell us about the show? Yeah, can you please? Yes. Well, I mean, it starts in, med in very many different uh, places, let's say. One was on the S-Bahn to my studio, and I chanced to see some, a, a, a glimmer uh, or a spark of light coming from uh, some aluminum pieces, which were on a pile on a mountain on Westhafen. And I said, I have to do a show with that material because it was shining in the light. And uh, fortunately, I had the collaboration of Ariane. And so she went immediately to the place and she said, we need this. And, uh, and um, it, it was strange because uh, the, the, the first things that, um, I mean, the, the thing, I knew that I wasn't able to be able to work with what it was in that moment there. But I, I was standing, one of the days, uh, there arrived a truck with uh, two containers and they left uh, a, a very white material, very nice material, which was different from the other material. And so I said, please, this is what I need. Uh, please uh, have, don't touch this, put it in this corner. Uh, and uh, then we can do something with that. And uh, as a matter of fact, we had at our disposal two containers, you know, five tons each, I think, or something like that. And um, we could bring it to the gallery. And so it was very nice. So if I needed more, I could use more. So it's if almost a ready-made, the whole thing. It's, you found it, but then you obviously changed it. But, uh, I, but Danilo usually works with materials that he usually finds in the exhibition spaces, no? Yeah. Things that he turns around or things that he finds from the institutions. And in this case, we a little bit forced you to look outside because the DAD gallery is such a straightforward white cube. It doesn't offer yeah. that much. That, oh, yes. To, I, I mean, understand. Yeah, free. right. So we forced him to look into the wider area of Berlin public space and look for things that interest him. And with your and great was, enthusiasm. <laughs> which, yeah, which I love. And, and but there are different aspects. One thing is the found material. One thing is the McCracken, kind of pseudo McCracken, if you want. Do you right. want to say something about that? Yes, of course, I have a lot to say about that, but I don't want to say too much right now. And, and then we have uh, these <laughs> other things, right? These sculptures here. Radiators, radiators. They're amazing also. Which are so beautiful. They're, they're, I mean, they, they are pure drawing. I mean, the best drawing, because it's been smashed, it's been... And the nice thing is that one... When you found them like this? Yes, they're just like that. I mean, I have not intervened them for anything, just to maybe to put this little thing here. And what about this tape? Ah, this tape, no. Uh, I mean, the pedestals are from the gallery. They're yeah. from downstairs. And uh, I said, Ariane, please bring me all the pedestals you have. Uh, we get them up here. And there was this big one also. And so, you know, they have a hole. They're not perfect. And the tapes is just to be able to... Well, as a matter of fact, the first tape was I used was this one, and it was so people would not uh, bump into this with their eyes or with their head, and so it was you know so people could see it, and um, it's just a, a tank, you know, a diesel tank, uh, which looks like a throne or looks like uh, it looks like a place in Colombia also, which is called a meadow, which, which had a slant, landslide, and it, it, it sort of symbolizes all those things. And it also has to do with the McCracken piece in the sense that the angle that touches here and the angle that touches here are the same angles that touch a McCracken piece, which is a black, beautiful plank. And uh, I, there's something fantastic about a McCracken, and it's the fact that, I mean, just touching a little angle on the floor and a little angle here, he says that this is uh, painting and this is sculpture, but not only that, I think it's, um, it's, uh, it's sort of an antenna which permits communications at very different levels and very different, uh, um, I don't know, realities. And so, and this is, this is not, not an exact copy, but this is sort of a, a cracker that made by Danilo, uh, by how I make my things, which I love Formica. I've always worked with Formica. And so I did it with Formica here. And you see, it has a, a division here, which McCracken would never permit. And, uh, and McCracken's piece is very sensuous and very round. It's beautiful. It's like a, a beautiful uh, woman, let's say. And, and, and mine is a little bit more 
rigid here. And so it has, it, it is thicker. And the thing is that you can see what it is made of behind. My Kraken does not permit that. No, it's McCracken, it's a perfect object. It's perfect. It's a, a perfect object, a beautiful, perfect object. And, 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 so, and so here um, here we have sort of the lungs and the stomach and all those other things. Uh, you know, that might uh, be the structure of the, of, the, of the piece. And then there's this, this beautiful drawing of, of, the, of the plywood, which McCracken also uses. I mean, also uses. He, he uses plywood. I also use plywood. And, uh, but this one is bent, so it has a life of its own, let's say, it's, it's more bent. And it's the relationship of this strange reflecting uh, being and this other strange thing made of... Uh, I was talking to, to Benjamin today, uh, that, 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 and I was saying, you know, that I hate the fact that this is going back, because it, it sort of has a... Each thing has a It's life. going back well. It's going back tomorrow. Uh, they pick it up and it's going back to the to the best half and it's a recycling. recycling company. So it will not be preserved as an artwork, right? And so we discussed about that thing, and, and it's it's just so the ready-made goes back into its original. Exactly. It's in a in the center of, of use. It's recycling. Yeah. But the thing is, I feel a little bit sad because I do not know it as well as I should know her. In other words. She still would open up more. I mean, I would need more time than a month. It would be probably six months to maybe know her, uh, maybe know her better, and then permit her to die in that sense. And uh, but but it's a sense of the perishable, which is you know so so important. And uh, and she has also shed this this other. Th I mean, it's crazy because every time that, that I see it, he always says she. <laughs> no, but 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 I mean. But, you know, some of them are, uh, some of them are she and some are he's, and uh, the, I think they are entities. I, I, and that's why one suffers and, so and, much and, with them. And, and so these will not be preserved, but the objects there will be preserved. Oh. Well, I am trying to uh, take that one and take this, this, these two little ones. And, and, and my son says that I have to take this one. Because I do not have, that's what my son says, but he would love to have this one. And I said, but it's big, it's big. And so he said, no, but it's okay, we can have it. Because he wants to have one of these, of these things. Yes. Because I mean, I think it could be used for something else, but that's not necessarily part of this installation. I mean, this is very much like a theatrical stage for me. And, you know, it, come, it goes into the, all the elements are in a particular balance. Right. I mean, what happens to particular pieces afterwards is not really such a big issue for this. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, but, but they do, I mean, they do have, um, I don't know, a certain value, this, this thing, this form, which I've grown to, to like. In the future. Yeah. Yes, in the future. And this one also, this, this is... Nice. And have you also talked about the Pinter text? No. Yeah, I'm going to ask why Harold Pinter, that's interesting. Yes. Oh, oh, you Pinter should see, uh, Pinter, wait, um, I'm a little bit nervous right now. But Pinter, Pinter. There are three texts. It doesn't work. No, there are three things. Yeah. Right? Uh, one is a poem, one is a letter, and one is a transcription of a uh, thing that he did uh, for Samuel Beckett. It was called A Wake for Sam. So it was A Wake for Samuel Beckett. Two months after Samuel Beckett had died. And the thing he says, I mean, what he says about Samuel Beckett, are so beautiful. Uh, that I, I can't believe in the beauty, I mean, of the, of the great beauty of his writing with respect to Samuel Beckett. So he, he says that they were going from bar to bar in par Paris, and at four o'clock in the morning they had to stop for, a, uh, for some soup, from, for, for onion soup, and uh, that, he, you know, Pinter just fell on the table without, uh, after drinking too much, and, and he says also of the excitement of being with Samuel Beckett. That he, I mean, the text is really nice. It's just a little paragraph, and and uh, he describes this, and then and then and then he falls, you know, sort of out, and then uh, Samuel Beckett goes through the whole of Paris looking for a tin of bicarbonate of soda so he can give it to him, so uh, he can, and and, and then Peter says, which indeed worked wonders, and it's this beauty of friendship between these two guys going around in a car in Paris at a great speed because Samuel Beckett drives really fast, which I mean, and which I love. 
And so that sense of, of, of you know, being in a car at, at whole speed can also be uh, translated to Berlin. And I also, I also imagine Beckett and Pinter, you know, going around in a car at a great velocity through these streets. Uh, because it's like that. I mean, uh, the, the important thing is the beauty of the friendship between the two and the respect of Pinter for Beckett. So that's what one of the texts says. And the other text, which was also in the program, of the BBC program that he presented a month after Beckett had died, is this other piece, is a, is a, a letter that he wrote when he was 24 years old to a friend. Beckett? Pinter wrote to a, to a friend a letter, yeah. and you should see the beauty of the letter. And it's this, and it's, I, I think this summarizes everything that I would like to tell a student of mine. I mean, this is, this is a class of, um, I mean, it's a little bit harsh, the, the, what he says, but I decided to include it because he also included it in the program. And so, but the program came afterwards. Um, and so, um, it, it's, it, this is fantastic, I mean, this is all that art is for me. And so it, re it, it re resumes uh, that thing. And that's why it had to be in the show. Uh, it, it, I mean, this, this is... Nobody can say it better. I mean, nobody can say it. He wrote it when he was 24 and, you know, in pictures and, and such a, you know, young and uh, young with all the force and about Beckett, and, and then he meets him, and then he says the other thing that is here. So that's the third text. Oh, but you should see what the strange uh, has. You know what happened? Uh, this is the other one, which is so beautiful. Now, the thing is that the thing is supposed to be playing, but it's not playing. Did you turn it on? Yes, I turned it on. Do you know how to turn it on? Uh, not really. It's right there. It's the it's sound. It's the, the sense, sound. the sound of Pinter saying this and Pinter saying that. Yeah. And Pinter, you know, just to hear, and I found it on YouTube, but I, I don't know how I found it. It was really luck. But that's about the fast driving. This is about the fast driving and the tobacco. But it's so nice, I, you know, uh, and excitement, you know, being with Beckett. Indigestion and hard one, so I laid my head down on the table. And when I looked up, he was gone. I had no idea where he'd gone. And I thought, perhaps this has all been a dream. I mean, the fact of being with Beckett has been a dream for Pinter. I first met Samuel Beckett in 1961 in Paris, when my play with the Piazza was being produced. He came into the hotel, walking very quickly indeed, at a sharp stride, a quick handshake. It's extremely friendly. I'd known his work for many years. He had that way too. Believe that he'd be such a very fast driver. He drove his uh, little sit from bar to bar for the whole evening. Very uh, quickly. Very quickly. We were together for hours and we finally ended up in a place in Les Arts eating onion soup at about four o'clock in the morning. And I was by this time overcome with, do I think, uh, alcohol and tobacco excitement. Um, <clears throat> with indigestion and heart, so I lay down on the table, still seated the place. When I looked up, he was gone. As I said, it's about four o'clock. I had no idea where he was gone, but he remained away, and I thought perhaps this is all been a dream. I think I went to sleep on the table, and about 45 minutes later, the table jolted, and I looked up, and there he was, and he had a package in his hand, a bag. Said, uh, I've been over the whole of damn Paris and find this. I finally found it. And he opened the bag, gave me a tin of my heart, and said, Which you did work well. And then he continues. Some time ago, I, a friend of mine showed me a letter written to him in 1954. When I was 20, I forgot about it, and I'd like to read a paragraph from that letter. The farther he goes, the more good it does me. I don't want philosophies, tracts, dogmas, creeds, way outs, truths, answers, nothing from the bargain basement. 
Here's what 